Today we are going to talk about color grading and more specifically how I color grade my videos to give it that cinematic look and specific touch that I give to my videos because there's been a lot of you asking, Peter, how do you actually color grade your videos and how do you get S-Log footage to look that good because whenever I try it out, it doesn't look the same as yours and you are in luck because today we are going to cover everything that I just said in this video. So. Let's get to it. So color grading is something that I have never gone a course in and it's something that I've just like tried to find my own path to make my footage look good and somehow successfully managed to find a look that I like, which is pretty cool. Before we jump into Final Cut Pro, what you need to know is that I'm shooting in a profile that is called S-Log2. And if you're interested in what kind of settings exactly that I'm using, I'm gonna drop a picture profile down below so you can just go there, try it out yourself and see how you like it. But I think it works pretty good for when I'm shooting my vlogs, this video, or any kind of cinematic sequence. So when you're shooting in S-Log2, one of the things that is really important is that your footage is supposed to be overexposed. So before any color grading is done, your footage is gonna look really washed out, it's gonna look a little bit overexposed, and it's gonna look really dull and boring to look at before you do any color grading. But the reason for that is because when you're shooting in S-Log2, you will keep a really good portion of the dynamic range that is in the video. Just to give you an example, when I was shooting the poker b-roll, I tried to overexpose the footage to somewhere between plus 1.0 or plus 1.3 because that is where I found to be like a sweet spot for when I'm like exposing S-Log footage to make it look the best way that I possibly can get out of the camera. And in the beginning, when you're shooting in a flat color profile, it's gonna be really hard to know exactly how you're gonna expose the footage to make it look the way that you want it to look when you're color grading it. But I've found that like plus 1.0, plus 1.3, when I'm exposing in S-Log is a really good way to go for it. Depending on what you want to expose for, of course, but usually somewhere around there. Okay, so now that you're a little bit more comfortable on how to actually expose S-Log and make it look the way you want it to look in camera, then we're gonna jump into Final Cut Pro and I'm gonna show you the rest that I do to expose, to expose, to color grade the footage the way that I do. One of the first things that you wanna do in Final Cut Pro is that you wanna to go to view, and you're gonna choose show in viewer and you're gonna choose video scopes because the reason that you wanna have video scopes is so that we know that we're not gonna blow out any highlights and not clip any shadows and make sure that we stay within the range of what is possible to see on our monitors. So if we look at a raw shot of one of the scenes from the poker b-roll you can see that it looks really grainy like there's a lot of color fringing we have a couple of purple stuff up here and it doesn't look cinematic at all this looks really like beginner shot and that is why we have to add some color grading to this footage to make it look cinematic or make it look a little bit more professional or make it look that mm, that is how it's supposed to look. Uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do is that I'm going to drag cinema grade onto the clip. And the reason that I'm color grading each clip individually and not like adding an adjustment layer and dragging it out and then like, oh, this is how it's supposed to look. Uh, is because when I shoot it, I try to expose the clip for what I want to show off in the shot that I'm getting. So not all the clips are going to be exactly the same exposed or not all the clips is going to be like exposed for the shadows or exposed for the highlights. And that is why it's gonna require a little bit of, a little bit, a little bit of tweaking for each clip individually. But when you've added cinema grade to your clip, what I do is that I open the controls up here and then this pop-up comes up and it shows us the raw file, like the raw footage that we have. There's a bunch of different ways that you can use Cinema Grade and I'm not saying that my way is the correct, but I found it to be really easy. And what I usually do when I'm color grading any of my S-Log footage is that I start with the mid-tones and then I drag them down almost as far as I can to the left. And what I do then is that I take the shadows and drag them up 
so that we get a nice look, like a nice matte look to our shot. And somewhere around there is good, I think. And we can hit apply on that. And on the video scopes right here, you can see that we're not clipping any shadows below zero and we're not going above a hundred which means that we can increase the exposure ever so slightly to 1.60 that looks pretty good and what you can do now is that you can do just a couple of small tweaks and it's gonna look really good because i think that this actually looks pretty good for being two things done to the footage but something that i usually do is that I drag down the saturation ever so slightly to somewhere around like minus 13. And in this case, like with the poker b-roll, something that I want to do is change out the color of the poker mat to make it look a little bit more washed out and a little bit less green. So then we're gonna go down to the vectors right here. And then I'm gonna choose the greens and then we're gonna drag down the saturation to somewhere around minus 70. And then we're gonna drag up the hue towards the right, give it a little bit more yellowy, yellow look, somewhere around there. And then we're gonna choose the reds and we're gonna increase the luma a little bit on that and increase the saturation. And we're gonna hit apply. It actually starts to look really good compared to what we had originally. But there is still a couple of things that I wanna to do to this. And then we're gonna go back into Cinema Grade. We are going to jump to the final grading tab. It's basically gonna be the same option all over again because you have all the different sliders here on the right. So I'm gonna drag down the midtones again and drag up the blacks again to give it a little bit more matte out look. And then I'm gonna scroll down and I kinda of wanna increase the saturations on the red ever so slightly. And then I'm gonna drag down the luma a little bit to minus 15. I think it looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna choose the green and we're gonna drag down the saturation a little bit more on that. And then we'll scroll up and we're gonna increase the highlights, drag down the midtones, increase blacks, drag down the midtones, and adjust the blacks, increase the highlights, and you know what, we can actually remove a little bit of the red tone, so we're gonna go into the base correction in Cinema Grade, and we're gonna choose the red, and we're gonna drag this down to minus 14, that looks pretty good. <laughs> All right, so what I want to do now is that I want to add Color Finale Pro to this as well. So we're gonna drag Color Finale onto our clip and then we're gonna place this above Cinema Grade so that we don't do the adjustments below the Cinema Grade adjustments because we wanna have the Cinema Grade adjustments to be the first ones and then Color Finale is gonna be the second ones. And the reason that I like to use both Color Finale and Cinema Grade is because Color Finale provides you with a couple of things that you cannot get in Cinema Grade, and Cinema Grade is easier to work with than Color Finale, so they both complement each other with things that you cannot get in Cinema Grade, and Cinema Grade makes it easier to get where you want really fast. So we're gonna go down here and we're gonna increase the sharpness ever so slightly because this was shot in 1080, so then we wanna up the sharpness a little bit and then we're gonna go down to edit layers and this is where you can adjust all the different things for example right here you have the color wheel you have the curves you have the vectors you have the huge saturation a bunch of different things that you can adjust I'm not gonna go in depth on all of those because I usually don't use all of those but I will use the color grading wheel to adjust a little bit of the tone that I want to set on this entire sequence. So I'm gonna go to the gamma on the color wheel and I'm gonna drag it up towards the red-ish, somewhere around there. And then I'm gonna drag down the saturation a little bit more 
And we're gonna look at the before and after. A slight, slight adjustment, but it looks so much better. And then we're gonna add a curves layer and we're gonna add a curve up here and we're gonna apply like a classic S curve to this. And I'm gonna raise the bottom here. Something like so. And looking at the before and after color finale, you can see a slight adjustments, but it basically makes the footage pop a little bit more. And the final thing that I wanna to do to this is that I wanna drag down the overall saturation to the footage. So we're gonna drag this down to like 0 0.90. And you know what, looking this back, it actually looks pretty darn good right here. And as you can see here on the video scopes, we're not going above 100 and we're not going below zero. So we're not blowing out any highlights or clipping any shadows, which is good because we want to stay within that range to make sure that we keep the dynamic range in our footage. And the thing is, it doesn't really matter what kind of footage that I'm shooting, as long as I have the S-Log picture profile, I usually color grade my videos the same way. So say for example that we wanna take this exact color grading and then apply it to the cinematic drummer b-roll then we're just gonna mark the clip hit command c and then mark the new clip and hit command shift v and then we're gonna choose color finale and cinema grade and then we're gonna hit paste and as you can see like it looks way darker than our other shot and that's because we didn't have sufficient light for this shoot to light the entire room but what we can do is that we can go down to cinema grade and then we can adjust the mid-tones here on the base. So we can just drag this up ever so slightly and then we can drag down the blacks ever so slightly to somewhere around here. And playing this back, I actually do think it looks really, really good. And as I said, this kind of color grading that I do to my footage usually work on all the different S-Log footage that I have. So say for example, uh, Aftermath, you know, me and Oscar playing around in, in a band on warehouse, then if we copy and paste onto that, it's gonna look like this. And that is actually pretty, pretty good. It looks really dreamy. So a couple of things that I've noticed when I'm shooting with S-Log is that it does give you a really high dynamic range and it does give your footage like a professional look as long as you know how to color grade it. If you don't color grade it, it's gonna be really hard for you to get any kind of professional look to your footage. And it's also gonna be better to like crank up that ISO if you wanna make sure that you get the right exposure in camera, instead of trying to keep low and underexpose your footage, because S-Log is gonna feel the best if you overexpose it and not underexpose it. And yeah, that is basically everything that you need to know to be able to color grade your footage the way that I color grade my footage. And uh, I really hope that you liked this video. And if you did, please do give it a thumbs up because it does help a lot. And uh, if you're interested in any of the plugins, I'm gonna drop a link down below so you can go there and check it out. Va. And uh, yeah, if you haven't subscribed, that'd be highly appreciated. And uh, until next time, Peter from Sweden is gonna say goodbye.